was not much of a person to celebrate Easter. At times I thought it was really boring because I always lived alone. My family were always in Wisconsin celebrating like it was New Year's Eve. I was all alone. I didn't want to cook lamb. I didn't want to do anything. All I wanted to do was sit at home and just watch TV and drink a couple of beers. I'm not really the guy to go out, but you know what? I decided to call, call my friends and see if we could hang out somewhere. We, I met my friends at a park and it was quite fun. We were talking, going over pl things, played games on our phones. What could be better? And then my friend mentioned to me that there was something going on in the park. Something about someone going around like a lunatic dressed as a, in a bunny suit. But I decided maybe it's just someone playing around for the holidays. I mean, it's Easter for God's sake. But I never just, I never leave things alone for too long because it always gets in my mind. If someone mentions something to me, I always go to sleep and then it comes to me and I wake up in the middle of the night wondering what on earth I'm gonna do. So I waited and waited and waited until I decided just to mention to my friend that let's go and hang out somewhere more private. My friend mentioned to me that there was a there was a tunnel not far from here. So I decided, screw it, I'll go. We, we walked towards the tunnel, which wasn't far. It only took us 20 minutes until we arrived. We arrived at the tunnel and waited and waited and did, we just did some games and we played a few and we watched a few YouTube videos. We were so interactive with our phones, we didn't realise what time it was, or what time of day it was. As soon as we looked up from our phones, we saw it was pitch black outside. We had been playing video games for 9 hours. I said to my friend, God damn it, have we really been playing for this long? My friend said to me, yeah, I guess so. Anyway, we need to get home, we don't want to get lost here. We decided to walk back in the direction of the tunnel, towards the north end of the tunnel. Until we keep, keep hearing some sort of banging on the side of the, on, on the tunnel. The, the side of the tunnel was made of metal, so it's not common for it to make quieting sounds. It was quite loud, it sounded like something it was hitting it on intentionally. My, I said, what was that noise? He, my friend said to me, it's probably the wind. Come on, let's keep going before we get even more lost. We waited and waited until we heard the sound again, but no, we didn't hear the sound, so we walked off. We came out of the tunnel, and I heard some sort of giggle from up on, on top of the tunnel. It was coming like some sort of child laughing on the top of the bridge. I said, bro, wait, I hear something. He said, and then my friend said to me, oh, forget it, man, it's probably just your mind playing tricks on you. And he said, well, how come I heard it? Well, probably it's just some, some sort of kid playing around. I don't know. It's Easter, for God's sake. Come on, man, let's go. I decided to shrug it off and just go with my friend and listen to what he said. I walked around in the forest looking for glass bottles I could smash against some of the trees because we thought that was fun at our age. We were 15. And that was something to do at our age. But there were none. And it was pitch black and we didn't want to go any further. And look for bottles. So then, walking through the forest was a piece of cake. We knew our way through to our car. Until we heard some sort of, some sort of axe or some sort of metal, metal weapon hit the ground. The thud made us jump. And I said, I told you, there's something out here. My friend said to me, calm down, man. Probably just some sort of teenager. Maybe it's the same age as us. Maybe it's one of our other friends. You know how they play games on tricks on us like that. I said to him, only at school, though. But we didn't do anything about it, and we kept walking, but at a quicker pace. Then we heard footsteps coming from behind us. It was very, very frightening. So then, as soon as I knew it, 
I turned round. Standing there, in front of me, was some person dressed in a bunny suit. It showed it had two bunny bunny ears on top of the head. He looked about six foot four, and he was holding an axe. He had blood all over his vest, and he looked insane. I kept on, I, I told my friend, I shouted towards my friend, RUN! I ran and ran, and my friend up ahead ran into the car and got the car started. Then we heard the footsteps of the dreaded bunny chasing after us. Then I remembered I had a gun on me. I pointed the gun towards the bunny, but it didn't stop him. He started charging us with the axe. I shot a couple shots at him, but I missed because I suck at aiming. So I ran and ran towards the car and got in it. Then the bunny decided to take his axe and swing at our window. He broke the window of our car and climbed in like some sort of zombie apocalypse film. We screamed out of our wits and started screaming for help, but then we decided to get out of the car and start to run further and further into the forest to hopefully shrug off this person. My friend said to me, let's go back to the tunnel, he'll never find us there. We ran back to the tunnel and we, we waited, but there was nothing, no sound of it. Then we heard some sort of muffled crying sound coming from the, some sort of shed in the distance. We saw some shed in the distance and I heard a bunch of crying noises, something like small children and toddlers. I said, who's there? There were no response, the crying continued. And I said, my friend said to me, leave it, it's probably a trap. You gotta go, we gotta go man, this bunny's after us. But it didn't sound like a trap. I said, Th that doesn't sound like a trap. There could be kids in there. He said, it's probably just a recording. Let's go now before that we, we get into more trouble. But then I realized that it didn't sound like a recording. It sounded real. I creaked open the shed door and saw a bunch of kids lying on the floor, crying and all tied up. And I said, whoa, what's going on in here? One of the children, who was older, around nine I think, said some bunny man came and kidnapped all of them and tied them up. And he said that he's killed six of the kids who cried too much. I was stunned. I told my friend to call the police immediately while I decided to comfort the kids and calm them down. While my friend was calling the police he said he heard footsteps coming from behind him. Surely it must have been the bunny man. I decided to also look after the kids, but I kept hearing some sort of axe and the kids all, all stopped laughing whenever I told them my jokes and happy to comfort them. They all stopped hearing this banging noise coming outside the shed. I got inside and I barricaded the door of the shed. When I heard police sirens, I decided to run towards, I told the policemen that they were in there. The policemen took all the kids into custody and bring them into questioning. They told them that a bunny man kidnapped them and would never give them back. He said he, they killed th six of their friends. who were, They were all hanging out at They were all at a party with their parents and he, at an Easter party until some man dressed as a bunny came along and told them that he had an unlimited supply of chocolate if you came with her. All the children went missing, and all of them at the party, and he killed six of them. I will never ever forget that night. All those blood-curdling screams of some sort of those children, blood all over the floor of the shed, was absolutely horrific. The police have still not caught the bunny man today, but it's said that when I, when I went back there a few weeks ago, I heard footsteps coming from behind me. I don't know if it was him or someone else in the forest. I don't know. It's probably might have been my imagination playing tricks on me. Because it almost didn't feel real. It felt like a dream. But I can tell you my friend said it was 100% real. Whenever I doubt myself, my friend reminds me to snap out of it. It was real. Yeah, 
I leave, I sit here in my house today. I always celebrate Easter now with my friends and family. And I promise I never myself that I don't want to live, relive that nightmare. Never again. Never ever. Hopefully one day this person will come forward and show his true identity. But now the police are still on the hunt, but the case has gone cold. I cannot believe what has happened to this world. Why has this even happened? But one exp unexplained thing I've never actually wondered. What was the giggling sound coming from the top of the, ch the bridge? That's one thing I always want to wonder. Was that some kid struggling for help? Maybe he'd been slaughtered and I could have saved him if I told my friend to go up there and have a look or I went up there and didn't listen to him. Well, my friend was very trustworthy and I always listened to him. I don't want to relive that nightmare, neither does my friend. Hopefully he gets caught one day and we can all live in happiness. My family lives in Miami, Florida. I live in Alaska. I have to take a six hour flight long journey down on plane to get to it. I never like to drive because I don't like dri doing long haul road trips. Stopping for gas, or it's easier just to fly on a plane and get there in one day. So I decided to book a flight because every Easter I go and visit my family. I occasionally go in the summer too, due to the fact that Alaska summers are nice, but they could be hotter. And also in Christmas, because the winter is way too cold. I decided to get all my stuff packed and ready. I was all ready the next day, and my flight was all only in a couple of hours. I set off for the airport and took an Uber on my way to the airport. When I arrived, I tipped the driver and he drove off. I entered the airport at around possibly 2 a.m. 2 in the morning and I was tired out of my wits. I decided to go and lay down on the, on the comfy, nice padded seats at the airport in the waiting area. I checked in my bags and I also was got, got through security and all I had to do now was lie down and relax. There were no one, no, there was not a lot of people in the airport due to the fact that it was Alaska and it was very, very, very early in the morning. So I basically was the only living person in the airport, as it looked like it. Most other people were downstairs in the shopping mall area. So I was basically alone at this time. But if this was afternoon, it would be way more packed. I waited around for a couple of hours until I realised something had gone wrong. I heard something coming from the from the toilet. Someone came out. He had he he was had a long beard. He had red eyes and he looked quite old. I didn't take much notice of him because he was probably just a worker or some person trying to board his flight. But then I realised he went into the beside the water fountains. It blocked my view a little bit because there was a wall in the way. Then came out the next thing I knew was I saw an axe coming from behind the, the wall. I quickly took a quick glance and saw he was getting changed into some, some sort of bunny suit. And I said what does he need an axe for? And why is he getting into a bunny suit? I just shrugged it off thinking maybe he, he, he found the axe and he was trying to report it. And also, he may be dressing up as a bunny to for the kids. But there were no kids around here, so I don't know why he was dressing into one of these costumes. I knew his identity and his face, but with that bunny costume on, anyone would think he's a regular person. So I decided to go back to laying down after getting a nice sleep. Two hours later I woke up and played games on my phone. I checked around that corner again and the bunny man was still standing there, just very, very still. And I thought, he's been standing there for two hours? 
Then he made his move around the corner and I was scared. So I hid underneath the seats. All I could see was his feet. And he started heading downstairs towards the shopping areas. Luckily there was no one down there due to the fact that a lot of the flights had left early. And I realised that my flight was only in 30 minutes so I had to run to the gate. I ran to the gate as they were just calling in the final call. So then I boarded and I took my seat. I decided that once the plane had taken off, I'd go to the bathroom because I really needed it. The plane took off on time and I was on my way to see my family in Miami. There was not packed of course because a lot of people don't really fly to Miami this early in the morning. But it wasn't very... So I basically had a row to myself. So if I wanted to sleep, I could just lay down on all three seats. But as soon but then I decided to, but my plan was to go to the bathroom. I went inside the bathroom and decided I and then I realized that one of the bathroom stalls was locked. I tugged on it, but clearly someone was in there. I was thinking to myself, who would want to go to the bathroom at this time? Maybe me. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. In my mind I was thinking it, but did someone really have to take the biggest stall? Anyways, I decided to take the smallest stall at the end of the plane. I got out of the bathroom and I sat back down. But something really was disturbing. The big bathroom at the front was locked the entire flight. It was only about 30 minutes until landing where the flight crew had to bang on the door to the person saying, you've been in there for six hours, come out. But there was no response. So I said to the flight attendants, I went in, the, I decided I wanted to go in there before, uh, just after we took off. And that's been locked ever since. And he said, she said to me, did you see the person who went in here? And I said, no, I did not. But one old man came up to us and said, I may have seen him go in. He was dressed in some sort of bunny costume, holding an axe. And then the flight stewards would, then everyone were looking at the flight stewards, saying, how could you let this person on? But then they, she said that some, no one came on wearing a bunny suit. And they would obviously notice someone if they had an axe. But one of the, one of the man crew members said to him, he heard some clanging noise coming from a backpack. It sounded like an axe or glass bottle, but he didn't stop it because he probably thought it was just his mind playing tricks on him. But it must have been that his plan his plan might have been to wait until the, the plane had landed and then decide to come out and kill everyone in Miami airport. We didn't want to take the risk. We notified the pilot and he kept the plane in the air long enough for, for to let air traffic control know. I sat in my seat all nervous and I, I said to the flight crew, can all our, us economy pl please move to the first class? She said yes without without saying without argument because she knew that it would be better for, for all passengers to move to the front of the plane, nowhere near this person. So they we, we all moved to the front of the plane and stayed in first class. The flight flight crew were quite calm, and we just waited and waited, but still no sign of anyone coming out until only 20 minutes later, we hear something. We hear the bathroom stall opening, showing that the person has finally come out. Flight crew members scream as she saw the bunny person heading towards her, swinging at her with an ax. She decided to cover the curtains and notify the pilot. It was, the curtains weren't enough for this bunny. So they all barricaded the curtains and put many things at, up against it so this person would not be able to get through. He basically had a cabin to himself so he could do basically anything he wanted. 
If he wanted to tamper the plane, he could. But the pilot notified the air traffic control about who's on board, and everyone was all worried, including me. I always, I was all shaky and worried. So as soon as I knew it, the pilot was making an emergency landing. Police were waiting on the ro on the on the side of the runway, waiting to get inside. So it was a step so all passengers could disembark. As soon as the plane landed, we all got off as quickly as possible. Two, ec two emergency doors were supplied so m people could get off quicker. And then, as soon as they we knew it, we were disembarked off the plane. Then SWAT team, FBI and police officers barricaded through the... removed all the stuff and went in for the bunny man. He was arrested and taken out, and the bun his head was pulled off, and it was the same man from earlier. I knew it in that heart that he looked at me with a grin and a smile. It looked horrifying. I did not know who this person was, but clearly his attention his intentions that night was to murder everyone in Miami airports, as I was thinking on the plane. Thank goodness we knew who was in there and that old man was there to save the day. Because the pilot could have landed and then pulled up on the gate, let this person off and all hell would have broke loose. But luckily the police enforcements are there to protect us and serve us. And I'm grateful for that. I no longer take, pl after my flight back to Alaska, I no longer take I am too scared to fly planes because I don't want another recurring incident like this. Now I don't. I use in now in in future. I take road trips. And yeah, it may cost gas money, but I don't want to take any risks. But that's all that I had to say. Hope I'll never see this man again. Hopefully, he got rested and getting the help he needs. I was a really sensitive kid. I was four, so probably anything was able to scare me. Even the nicest of things would even scare me a little bit. Since it was Easter, my mum was always liking to go shopping to get candy, chocolate and all that stuff. But when she called saw a convention for the Easter Bunny to take a photo of him, I begged my mum not to. It would look so terrifying. I hated sitting on random people's laps, unless it was my mum's. I don't like it. The last one, the last episode I had was with Santa, and that did not go well. But now I was scared. What if I went up to him, and he tried to take me or something? But my mum, as you know, she persisted, and. I, as soon as I knew it, I was on his lap. This Easter Bunny had a weird sort of face to it. It didn't look very nice at all. It was some sort of a weird head costume. It was like, it, it almost looked, it was almost meant to look scary. It wasn't even, they weren't even trying to make it look happy or nice at least. I was scared. Said, and I, I was looking at him weirdly, and I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. Then in my ear I was whispered, do you want some free chocolate? And I said, yes, of course. And because I was four at the time, I didn't know understand the actual meaning of not talking to strangers and stuff. So the Easter Bunny got up from his chair and started walking towards a closet in the shopping centre. Then he opened it, and then he closed the door behind him. I was too young to understand what was going on, until maybe the last second. Then he looked at me, and I looked back at him, and I realised that this is not... I realised that he said to me, and I said to him, where's my chocolate? And he said, Oh, you're not getting any chocolate. You know, wondering why I asked you that? 
so you would trust me and I would come with so you would come with me. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn you into chocolate. I didn't understand what that meant. But the Easter Bunny said it in a way that I could understand. And as soon and I learned about this because my dad told me at a young age that he was actually gonna cut off my head and make it into chocolate by using organs from my blood. I was scared and I started running towards the door. He was stupid enough not to lock it. And he ran towards and I ran towards my mom and told her everything that just happened. Then I, my mom called the police immediately and we started running toward and we ran out of the shopping centre. Everyone was evacuated and on the, on the look and staff members were on the lookout for a bunny suit man. In, in a statement, an, an email, an email came to my mum. A letter came to my mum in the post and said that the bunny person working was never supposed to be there. He was a fake employee that day and used that to sit on people's laps and to kidnap them and kill them. He'd already killed two kids that day and their bodies were found in a ditch not far from outside of the mall. Not far from there. Unfortunately, those kids never survived because their heads were already gone. Unfortunately, that shopping mall filed for bankruptcy and it's been closed ever since. And I wanted to say that the person who sent this in actually had a real photo. I'll show you it. There. That is a real photo of what they took before he was kidnapped. But I never want to go back to that shopping mall and I hope it remains closed for the rest of its term. I never want to go back there ever again. Never. And I hope I'll never relive it. Sometimes in my dreams, I always dream about seeing the Easter Bunny in my window. But my mum actually said that one time, it actually had, someone actually was in the window, and it was the same person from before. I can't really remember this much, since I was only five, a year older, from the last time it happened. But I'm not sure. Anyways, I don't know. I just hope that that may have been a dream and I'll never see him again. Hopefully that man is getting the help, he's been arrested, and hopefully he's getting the help that he needs.